Hey Mr. Bill Poker Peeps, welcome to the vlog. This was quite the interesting and hectic and busy week. It was spring break for Billy at the University of Arkansas, so he went camping in the Art Mountains of Arkansas, which was just great fun for him. But the WSOP circuit was in Tulsa this week, which is only 90 minutes from where he lives. The NCAA tournament was also, first round action was there, and the Ohio State Buckeyes were playing. So, me and Billy put together a plan to for me to take a day off of work, go to Tulsa, watch the basketball game, play in the WSFE circuit events, and that's what we did. So our intention this week was to play in all of these events, be successful in all of these events, maybe win a big one, and of course, have fun and enjoy each other's company. So with that, let's get to the poker week that was. It has been a struggle tonight. I barely over. I'm not even back to starting stack. Haven't been at starting stack since the first hand. All right, we made it to the combined tables. We went from 27 to 18 players. And I still haven't made it back to starting stack. But I'm still in. Here we go. I shoved all in with nines. He called me with jacks. And the flop came 10, 5, 9. Whoever's a jack, I stink. Good game, guys. So first I played in the six max and did not do very well. I busted that. Uh, next was that your first World Series of Poker Circuit tournament? For this week, yeah. Yeah, but not your first one ever. Okay. I played one in Choctaw. Yeah, okay. So I wanted to play in the main. Billy wanted to play in the main. I thought I was gonna buy directly in. Billy had the satellite in, so he played in the satellite. I won a seat in a $250 satellite. How many players were there? 56. And how many got the money? Or the seat? Six, they gave out six tickets and seventh got cash. Yeah. yeah. Excellent job. That's amazing. So Billy got into the main event for $250. You got to tell him about the one hand that you got very lucky in the, in the, in the satellite. Oh, okay. <laughs> Early in the satellite, I got, everybody was short. It was like a super turbo. So. I got ace king in against pocket aces and four flushed him out. <laughs> <laughs> that guy was pretty happy. It was and then, but, but Billy was, Billy had the feeling of just power because he was the big stack. You said you were raising on pretty much every After hand. hand yeah. Because nobody could do anything about it. Yeah. So pretty cool. Then what you playing? Um, then we played in the, the double stack on Thursday, and we we cashed. We min cashed. We got 30th, and they paid 30 places. <laughs> but it was your first ever World Series Pro Poker Circuit cash, right? Yeah. So that had to be kind of exciting. So the main event satellite, I was doing pretty well. There was only um, about 60 players that entered. Um, I had the only started with 4,000 chips, and uh, with, I had 12,000 chips. Uh, at blind levels were 150 and 300. Uh, it was only 30-minute level, so pretty quick. Um, I got Ace of Hearts, Queen of Hearts on the button. There was a limper. Um, the middle position raised to 1,100. Um, there was a caller. Then I shoved all in with my ace queen of hearts and the middle position one original um, Razor made the call. He had pocket eights. I had ace queen Unfortunately, the board ran out two three two five five and that really kind of hurt me So I made it a bit longer until I finally got down to only 2300 chips. I was in the plus one the blinds were 300 650 uh, I got pocket queens. The under the gun raised to exactly what I had, 2300. I think he knew that. Uh, I made the call and the cutoff called. Uh, the flop with 8250 in the pot was 10 9 deuce. Can't ask for any more of that than that when I have pocket queens. Um, it goes check, the cutoff then goes all in. The other guy folds. I say something like, boy, I sure you hope you have pocket jacks. And he says, pocket jacks? And I said, no, I have pocket queens. He said, you're good. He has ace 10. The board runs out seven. Ace out of the main event satellite. Geez, I'd have gotten back to where a decent amount of chips if I'd have won that one, but 
was not to be. Cash games, I ran ridiculously bad. <laughs> Oh, I thought I was over all that kind of stuff. I'm not going to go over all these hands, but I lost with pocket sixes to pocket sevens when I flopped a set of sixes and he turned the set of sevens. I had ace king against pocket kings when I was the pre-flop raiser and he smooth called and the flop came king 3-3. Three, three. And then finally, I have pocket jacks and then flop comes jack queen 4 7-7. Seven, seven. He has pocket queens. I lost all three of those. Oh my goodness. It was actually quite a good testament that I didn't win, lose a whole lot of money on this trip. And we'll go over just a couple of those real quickly. I started up very, very well. I was up $250 in 30 minutes. Um, I have ace of clubs, jack of clubs, under the gun. I think I had about $1,200. Um, I made it 30. The plus one called, a cut off the button called, uh, the flop. 127 in the pot came ace, king, three. I made it 45. The P1, who was an aggressive Asian guy, uh, makes the call and the others folded. The turn was a seven. Uh, I made it 90. He raises me to 200. I don't really like it, but I can't, I don't think I can simply fold at the first sign of aggression, so I make the call. The river was a nine. I check. He bet 250. Usually this is one of my biggest leaks right here is I make calls when I am more than likely beat. So I made the fold. I was actually pretty proud of myself. Uh, I wanted to see what he had, but I didn't make the call. Uh, again, that's a big leak of mine and I'm trying to get better at it. Right or wrong, at least I didn't lose my money calling when I was more than likely beat. So I played three or four sessions of cash and basically the entire plus minus on the cash came down to a single hand. It's about 3 a.m. in the morning, playing 2-5. Our table of five joined with another table of five that had Moneymaker and a couple of the young pros, and they had really big stacks. 6,000, 4,000. A couple of guys on our table had three and 4,000. So for a 2-5 game, which was capped at 1,000, it actually was very, very deep. And every time Moneymaker in his game, the game becomes very, very loose. Chris likes to mix it up. He likes to put pressure on people. And this game was no different. Very, very loose, aggressive game. So I'm on the button with Ace-4 of Diamonds. I was straddling. Pretty much every person straddled the button. So it was $10 straddle almost every single hand. This particular hand, the under the gun raised to 35, and then it went seven players at $35. So on the flop, there's $245 in the pot already, uh, and it comes six of diamonds, eight of diamonds, two of clubs. Pretty good flop for the ace four of diamonds. Our aggressive Asian friend was in the plus one. He bet leads out for 200. There was then a short stack in the hijack who went all in for $605. Next guy tank folded, and I shoved it in there, 685. Okay, I hope you guys will find this next part interesting. I'm gonna tell you how I estimate my EV in this particular situation. So calculating the EV against only the hijack, uh, I give him a range of basically after the shove, any two pair, any set, any diamond draw, and any open ended straight draw plus over pairs of nines and tens. I don't give him jacks the races because he would have raised pre-flop. Pro Poker Tools says, given that particular range against Ace-4 Diamonds, Ace-4 Diamonds is actually a 55.58% favorite. When you calculate that EV, it's actually plus $314.85 every time you make that play. Very, very good. Now calculating the EV if the first player who bet $200 actually shoves behind, um, I'm giving him almost the same range. Any two pair, any set, any diamond draw, any straight ended, uh, open ended straight draw, but I'm giving him all over pairs because um, he was the initial raiser. He still has aces, kings, j queens, and jacks in his range. So ignoring the fact that they actually should be another EV calculation for the side pot, but it's so small it's irrelevant, uh, against both players, um, I am a 38.47% to win. So when I do that EV calculation, it's still plus 162.18. Again, very, very good. Now, could these calculations be flawed? Of course they could. I'm assigning them a range. I'm not taking into consideration other players who weren't already in the hand that still had a chance to come in. Uh, the, the small side pot that actually I'm not doing those things. So this is just an estimate. 
turns out it's pretty darn close. He comes back to our Asian friend. He said, hey, let's gamble. And he puts it in there. So here's the actual EV that I had, which honestly is completely irrelevant. When you make your decision, you have to make it based on unknown factors, like you don't know what cards they have, so you're assigning them a value. But here is the actual EV. It turns out I was plus $200.11 every time I made this call. So again, very, very good. I would take this pretty much every single time. So there's about 2100 in the pot, and the board runs out Queen of Hearts, Queen of Clubs. The Asian guy had pocket nines. The other guy had two three of diamonds for a lowest pair and a flush draw. And the Asian guy won. Friday night, Billy and I went to the box center to watch the Ohio State Buckeyes play the Iowa State Cyclones in the NCAA tournament first round. about to go play. I am not playing. Are you excited? Oh yeah. Tell them how you got there. Uh, I satellited in for $250. That's great. All right, Billy, I hope you crush it. Hey guys, I'm sitting in the player's lounge at the Hard Rock Tulsa. Uh, my son is playing in the main event. And there'll be no main event for me today. I'm just I'm not in the right frame of mind. Um, I'm not running very good again, and so I just decided I'm going to sit that one out and I'm going to give you updates on how Billy is doing. Billy got a really good table draw. There's some really good players in this tournament. Billy's sitting at a table with mostly amateurs. He said he's been raising most of the time and nobody's not really fighting back. He's got a little bit more than what he started with there an hour into the tournament. Billy really might be the chip leader at his table. He's in the main event day one. I'm gonna play in a smaller tournament today that's a, just a little simple 250. First break at the WSOP circuit, uh, ring event, it's a small 250 one day. Uh, I have doubled up. Uh, so we're at the end of level four, and I'm now at 20,000 chips. Right behind me is Billy playing in the main event, and he's doing really, really well. WSOP circuit, uh, turbo, we are at the dinner break. My guess is we're at about 50 some players. I think it's gonna pay about 24 players. So uh, we're all down to about, I don't know. I have 20 big blinds and I feel like I'm doing okay. <laughs> so it's really, really a turbo. So we came back from dinner break where there's about 50 players left. I'm in middle position one, 28,000, and the blinds are at 500, 1,000, and 100. Uh, and I wake up to pocket aces, yay me. And I raise it up to 2,800. The hijack then shoves in for 6,200. Comes around to the big blind. He shoves all in for 23,000. Of course, I snap call. The hijack has pocket tens. The big blind has king of clubs, queen of clubs. The flop. 10 of diamonds, 9 of clubs, 2 of clubs. It simply can't get any worse than that. <laughs> the turn, 2 of diamonds. So now the hijack uh, definitely wins the main. And the river, 5 of clubs. Big blind beats me on the secondary pot, which was much, much bigger. And that hand really, really crippled me and hurt me. And in fact, in two hands later, I got it all in with king jack against queen 10. And a 10 hit the flop. And I was out of... The WSOP Turbo, otherwise known as the Lil Pee Pee. But Billy played in the main event, and he's going to tell you about a couple of hands. So around level six, uh, I had about sixty thousand, which is double the double the starting stack. So I was doing very well. Um, I raised in late position with five seven off suit. Uh, I felt like I could pick on the blinds a little bit, so I raised. Uh, the guy to my left. 
on the button called um, and the blinds folded so we went heads up to the flop that was ace four deuce so I had a, I had a gutter ball um, ace high board looks good for me so I bet 1100 into a pot of like 30 3300 or something uh, and he called the turn was the five so I paired um, but I'm never good here so um, I decided to bet again 3200 or so and he called so at this point I'm putting him on a single ace the river was a nine offsuit nine <laughs> so I I know I'm not winning here so I can either check and give up or bet but I think he's calling pretty much any normal bet so I decided to over bet the pot, I bet 20,000. Which did that put him in? I was sweating no, Billy had, on this hand, and I, I think thought he had, like he had ace of spades, ten of spades, and when he shoved, I said, are you deck, so. crazy? Uh, I didn't realize he had I bet 20,000. He so. thought, it was a pretty good play, though. I like a couple it. minutes. And he questioned you. He was asking you yeah, questions, was trying to, to get you information. I just, wasn't, I just wasn't reacting to anything. So he eventually folded, though, so we got it through. <laughs> A little bit later in the tournament, I had like 70,000 or so. I have ace of clubs, 10 of spades, and the cutoff, I raise 2.5. The button calls, who had been playing kind of crazy, um, very loose, so we went heads up to the flop, blindfolded. Um, the flop was queen, jack, three of clubs, uh, and I had the ace of clubs, so this is pretty good for me. So I decided I was going to check raise the flop. Um, he had been just calling down any normal size bets so I was gonna check raise uh, so I checked and he unfortunately checked behind so we didn't get to do that uh, but the turn was a blank so I bet 2,000 and he snap raised me to 5,000 um, so I thought for a second he had about 25,000 behind and I am not folding the ace of clubs and I can't really just call here uh, and I can rep the nuts pretty pretty well right here so I shove all in and he disgustedly folds his hand. <laughs> I had about 60, 60,000. Uh, the blinds were one and two so I had about 30, 30 big blinds. I had ace queen off suit in the big blind. It went two limpers and the small blind completed to me uh, so I made it 14,000. The lady in middle position who limped. Do you remember her name? It doesn't matter. <laughs> she shoved all in. So she limp shoved, which pretty much to me, I didn't I don't think she would do this with aces. So pretty much it tells me she has a small pocket pair here. So I call. She has pocket sixes uh, and the board runs out clean for her. So she gets the chippies and wins the pot. So here's her equity in the hand uh, against my raise get it in range which as you can see is not doing very well. <laughs> I do not think this is a very good play but it worked so we're out. <laughs> That was a very mild reaction. Billy's reaction when it actually happened was not was quite not as happy. mild. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Billy, you did a great job, though, and this is a great tune-up for the World Series of Poker. We're going to play in a number of tournaments, including the tag team, the Burford boys. Let's take it down, Billy. Let's do it. So just a little update on what's going on with my vlog. A couple of cool things. I passed 1,800 subscribers, so thank you guys very much. Uh, I got a shout out from Poker News on Instagram. Not just me, but a number of vloggers who are not the big four or whatever you call those guys. <laughs> but it was really nice to get that shout out. I actually got a number of subscribers immediately from that, so that was great. And finally, I know I keep saying it, and it's gonna happen. The Mr. Bill Meetup game, probably in April, uh, still trying to work work out the details, but probably in April. I hope we can reward you guys with just a great time, some fun poker, and uh, a great meetup game. Hey, if you're not following me on one of the social medias, follow me. Uh, Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, and of course YouTube. Be a subscriber on YouTube. <laughs> Alright guys, I think that's going to do it for this vlog, and although not a successful 
uh, week financially. It was just a ton of fun. I got to hang out with Billy in Tulsa, uh, go to the Buckeyes game at the NCAA, they won. Uh, got to play in the World Series of Poker Circuit, got to hang out with my son, so that was awesome. Uh, it just reminds me that I am blessed. We're all blessed. Um, if you can think of the positive of <laughs> every situation you're in, you're gonna be much better off. There's always, always a positive. So thank you guys very much. Press the buttons, give me comments, and you guys have a fantastic, blessed week, and I will see you guys all next time. Bye.